In this lesson, we are going to focus on market equilibrium. If you saw the last lesson, we learned about the law of demand, which is this indirect relationship between price and quantity. We also learned about the law of supply, which is that direct relationship of price and quantity. And now we're going to see what happens when we combine those two concepts and put the supply curve and demand curve on the same graph. If you remember, we are a firm producing baseballs. But let's imagine now that we're not the only firm. In fact, there are several firms producing similar or the same baseball. And we're now part of a market. And a market is where producers and consumers come together and interact. And one thing that this market has as a pretty big factor in what consumers and producers do is the price. Example, here at P1, we have a fairly high price, which the law of demand tells us we'll have a low quantity demanded, denoted QD. And the law of supply will tell us we have a high quantity supplied, denoted QS. So what does this mean for the market? Well, we can see that QD is over here and lower than QS. So our overall demand in this market is lower than the amount of supply. So what does that mean exactly? Well, that means we have something called a surplus, which is when after all the demand has been satisfied, we still have product left. We still have supply left over after the consumers have been fulfilled. And in this case, we have nine baseballs left. And we derive that from the difference in our supply and demand. But we'll talk about that in a different lesson. What are firms going to do with all this excess supply? Well, what they'll do is they'll lower price. Because as you lower price, we all know that quantity demanded goes up. So they'll do this in an attempt to sell this inventory. So let's imagine they lower the price down to P2 and continue to produce baseballs. What's going to happen to our surplus? Well, we're not going to have a surplus anymore. We're going to have a shortage where we don't have any goods left over, but we have unfulfilled consumers. This is because the law of supply tells us that a lower price will result in a lower quantity supplied and the law of demand says it will correlate to a higher quantity demanded. So now our quantity demanded is much more than our quantity supplied. So our supply runs out pretty quickly but then there are still plenty of consumers left over who want goods. And this is why we have a shortage. We have a shortage of goods because we have a surplus of consumers willing and able to buy our baseballs. Now you must be wondering, well, if that's what it's like when price is too high and that's what it's like when price is too low, what about when it's just right? Well, firms seeing this price being low and they'll know consumers will buy more goods if they raise the price and they'll be able to produce more goods they'll raise it up to PE, which is the equilibrium price. Now, this is price where supply equals demand, which is known as market equilibrium. And you might have noticed that we don't have QS or QD anymore, but we actually do, except that the same exact point now at QE, or the equilibrium quantity. And like I said, this is when supply or quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. So this means our market is in equilibrium, hence market equilibrium, where we have no leftover supply after we satisfy all of our consumers. And this is pretty much the sweet spot of where every market, every firm wants to be. Because this is where they earn their max revenue and this is where consumers want to be as well because they're being fully satisfied. And we'll learn more about revenue calculations in a later lesson. But for now, this ends our lesson on market equilibrium. If you want to learn more about fundamental economics, even more about market equilibrium and what I mean by that is where they earn 
they being the firms earn the most revenue. Stay tuned for the next lesson. See you there.